So in this last video of diffusion, we're going to look into two factors that influence this process. The first one is diffusing species and host, and the other one is temperature. The magnitude of the diffusion coefficient, which is d, is actually an indicative of the rate at which atoms diffuse. Okay, so the diffusing species as well as the host material give great influence to the diffusion coefficient. Both diffusing species and the host material, right, they influence this diffusion coefficient, which is D. I will show you one table after this, and you can see that the values or the magnitude of diffusion coefficient, they are different for different combination of species and host material. So let's look at this one, temperature. The temperature dependence of the diffusion coefficient can be represented by this equation here. Okay, so here, D is the diffusion coefficient. D here is this, diffusion coefficient. And D0 is a temperature independent free exponential. And this is given in meter square per second. You can uh, find the value in the table, which I will show after this. Exponential of negative QD over RT. And QD here is activation energy. And the unit is joules per mole or EV per atom. So the activation energy here means the energy required to produce the diffusive motion of one mole of atoms. And a large activation energy results in a small diffusion coefficient. When you have a large QD, you will get a small value of D because this is exponential. R here is the gas constant and T is absolute temperature. I will show one example on how we can solve problem uh, involving temperature dependence. Okay, so this is the tabulation of diffusion data which I mentioned just now. So we have a different diffusion species here and different host metal. And you can see that if the diffusing species is ferrum and the host metal is BCC, uh, still ferrum, but BCC and this is FCC, you can see that the, um, the D is very much different. And the D not here, you can find the values here. And you can also find the value of activation energy. So you just need to refer to the um, temperature. For 500, this will be the value. For 900, you will have same value of D0 and activation energy, but only that uh, for the value of D at 900, you will have a different value of D. Okay, so let's look at one example here. Diffusion coefficient determination. Using the previous data, compute the diffusion coefficient for magnesium in aluminium. Host material is aluminium. And diffusing species is magnesium. So when you, we look at this table again, magnesium is here. Diffusing species into host metal, aluminium. Okay, so this diffusion coefficient can be determined by applying uh, this equation. The values of D0 and QD can be found from the table. All right? You can find the values of QD. You can find the values of D0. You just need to calculate the value of D, the diffusion coefficient here. Just substitute into this equation. This is D0. And this is QD. This is R. And this is D. D0 here is 1.2 times 10 to minus 4. These are Okay, the values here, they are temperature independent, all right? These are temperature independent, meaning you can just use them straight away, regardless of what the temperature is. Substitute D0, substitute QD. QD is 131,000 joules per mole, and then R and T. So, you will get D as 5.8 times 10 to minus 13. According to this value here, when the temperature is 500, the calculated value is 1.9 10, 10, times 10 to minus 13. But when the temperature is at 550 degrees Celsius, it is 5.8 times 10 to minus 13. And you can see that if we increase the temperature from 500 to 550, the D naught, uh, sorry, the diffusion coefficient D increases from here, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.
1.9 times 10 to the minus 13, right? Yeah. It increases to 5.8 times 10 to minus 13.